video, we're going to look at modeling piecewise functions from a table of values. In this case, we're going to look at some data from the U.S. Governor's Highway Safety Association. That's a mouthful. It publishes annual statistics on pedestrian deaths. And as you'll see, this is a very unusual looking graph. The number of U.S. pedestrian deaths reaches a low in 2009, only to begin steadily rising again. Below, we have the data from the studies. We're going to let T be the number of years since 1990. We have data going from 1990 to 2018. And we're going to let P of T represent the number of U.S. pedestrian deaths in year T. In 1990, there were 6,482 pedestrian deaths. It goes down to 4,109 in the year 2009. And then by the year 2018, it's back up to 6,227 pedestrian deaths. So we're getting close to the number of deaths in 1990 again. Let's start by just re-indexing our time. So I'm going to read each year and the T value that goes with it. We're letting T be the number of years since 1990. So 1990 would be T equals 0. 1994 would be T equals 4. 2000 would be T equals 10. 2009 would be T equals 19. 2010 would be t equals 20, and then we're counting by ones down the rest of the table. So it just goes 2011, 2012, 2013, so we're going to go 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and finally in 2018 we have a value of 28 for t. We're going to plot the t values with the number of U.S. pedestrian deaths. Let me read those out on the graph. I've plotted the scatter plot between t and capital P. The points that I've plotted are 0, 6,482, 4, 5,489, 10, 23, 4,779, 24, 4,910, 25, 5,495, 26, 6,080, 27, 5,977, and 28, 6,227. Now looking at this data, you can see that the graph decreases in a fairly linear manner to what happens in 2009, that value of 4,109, and then it increases in a fairly linear manner after that. So it's almost a V-shaped curve, but it is in fact a piecewise curve where we have a decreasing line and an increasing line. So we have one domain that falls between t equals 0 and t equals 19, and then another domain that falls between t equals 19 and t equals 28. We're going to use linear regression to model both of those lines sketching out what a piecewise function equation might look like. So capital P of T equals, and then a curly brace with two spaces, regression line one and regression line two. We're going to use regression line one for zero is less than or equal to T is less than or equal to 19. And we're going to use regression line two for 19 is less than T is less than or equal to 28. Again, we don't want to have the two equations both have a value at 19, so pick one or the other to hold the value at 19. We essentially need to find a linear regression for each set of data. In Desmos, you actually need to write two separate data tables, or Desmos will use all of your data to make a regression line, which won't make any sense. So regression line 1 will just use the points with t values 0, 4, 10, and 19. And then regression line 2 will use the data points with t values between 19 and 28. Let me go over to Desbos and make some modifications. Now I went ahead and saved this graph so that I could call up the original data again. So I'm going to start by simply backspacing through several lines of the graph. Until I only have the data for t values 0, 4, 10, and 19. Now I'm going to make a regression equation for this. Remember that we can start our regression equations with the equation y equals mx plus b, and then simply modify to meet the variables that are in our table. Instead of y, we have capital P sub 1. Instead of x, we have lowercase t sub 1. This matches the header column of our table. 
but we still have an error message until we change that equal sign to a tilde sign. As soon as we bring in the tilde, which is an approximation for the data points, we get a linear regression equation. It has a slope of negative 118.67 and a y-intercept of 6,189.78. Let me go ahead and write this equation down so that we can come back to it to write our piecewise function. y equals negative 118.67t plus 6189.78. So there's the linear regression equation that goes with regression line 1. Now we do the same thing with regression line 2. I'm actually just going to reopen US pedestrian deaths. So now I have my original data set again. Now I'm going to delete the first three data points, leaving me with the t-values from 19 to 28. Now I've changed the header row so that it reads t2, p2, just to remind myself that this is the second linear regression I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and calculate the regression. I'll use capital P2 for the y value, tilde m, lowercase t2 to match the header row, plus b. And that gives me a lovely linear regression model with a slope of 248.873 and a y-intercept of negative 733.11 if we round. Let's go ahead and write this on our other page. y equals 248.87t minus 733.11. Now I've got two regression lines, one for each graph. And from this, we can write the piecewise function for p of t. That's going to be capital P of t equals, and then the curly brace left side with room for two functions. The first function is negative 118.67t plus 6189.78. We use this if 0 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 19. And then the second piece is 248.87t minus 733.11. And we use this one if 19 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 28. Now this would be a good time to check that function against the original data in Desmos. Coming back to our original graph of data, I just pulled it up from my save again, I've entered y equals 248.873x minus 733.11, and then in a set of braces, 19 is less than or equal to x is less than 28. The other graph I drew was y equals negative 118.67x plus 6189.78, and then inside braces, right next to that, 0 is less than or equal to x is less than 19. And you can see that we have a nice V-shaped graph that fits the data very well. Now, if we needed a good estimate for the number of pedestrian deaths in 1997, that's seven years after 1990, so we would be finding P of 7. P of 7 would be that first piece of the function. So we're going to find P of 7, which equals negative 118.67 times 7, plus 6,189.78. I'm going to grab a calculator and work that out. I get 5,359.09. I'm going to add that to my graph just to make sure it looks okay. So we'll add the point 7 comma 5,359.09 and you can see that that point is very nicely on the linear regression line we drew. That's an interpolation, by the way. We're finding an estimated data point within the set of data that we had. So that checks out nicely. And then the other question, assuming the current trend continues, what's a good prediction for the number of pedestrian deaths in 2020? So in this case, we're finding P of 30. That's 30 years after 1990. In which case, we want to use the second piece of our piecewise function. So 248.87 times 30 minus 733.11. Again, I'll work this out with a calculator, and I get 6,732.99. Now you could basically round that to 6,733. So close. Let's go ahead and plot that point and make sure it looks okay. We'll use a parentheses 
and plot the point 30, 6733. And you can see that that point, while it falls outside the range that we plotted on our graph, it is in a direct line with the linear regression that we had. Let's just recap. If you're given a table of data, the first thing you're going to want to do is re-index the time if you need to, because that will help tremendously with linear regressions. And then plot that data to see what it looks like. After you plot the data, you should be able to figure out how many pieces you're going to break the graph into. You can sketch out what the pieces might look like domain-wise and how many there are into a sample formula. And then you need to split the data up into two separate regressions. Don't use all the data for your regression or it's simply not going to work. Finally, write your piecewise function. Make sure to use the notation that you've got your variables written in and write the domains over which each piece is valid.